Bonjour, and welcome everyone to the Chapelle Expiatoire and to my very first, well, never mind. Can you all hear me? My name is Joy, and I'm taking over today for the other guide who, well, never mind. Welcome to the Chapelle Expiatoire, which I like to call the chapel of getting your guilt out. Now, who has been here before? No one? Good. We can start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. Who can name that show? Don't be shy. Yes, Sound of Music. Here, have a good good, AKA a bonbon. I'm a mother, I come with treats. So as I was saying, La Chapelle Expiatoire. It was built as a memorial to Louis XVI who got in over his head as King of France and then lost that head during the French Revolution. It is also a memorial to his wife, Marie Antoinette, who frankly some didn't really want to honor, but had to since she was his plus one. So they were buried here separately in what used to be the Madeleine Cemetery, along with 598 others who were also guillotined. The first stone was laid in 1815 by Louis's brother, Louis XVIII. Now, what happened to the 17th, you may ask, and I shall answer that later, and by Louis XVIII's niece, Marie Therese, a.k.a. Madame Royale, a.k.a. La Duchesse d'Angoulême, a.k.a. La Dauphine, but most importantly, a.k.a. the daughter of Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, and the only member of the immediate royal family to survive the French Revolution. Yes, someone survived. Believe it or not, she comes as a surprise to many French people, too. Which is kind of crazy, right? But as many of us know already, it is women's stories that are often left untold. But don't worry, I'm not getting on my feminist soapbox. I got no axe to grind, just my teeth, according to my husband. So Marie-Thérèse lived through the French Revolution, two exiles from France, two restorations of the monarchy, two rounds of Napoleon. How did she survive all that? Well, today we get the chance to imagine how to put on her itty bitty silk slippers. People were tiny back then, right? And walk around as her. Well, I mean, with her, well, as her too. Well, never mind. <laughs> now, making little baby Marie Therese isn't easy. Mom and dad are young, 15 and 16, which isn't really considered young back then. But for the next eight years, no offspring, as in no heir to the throne, big problem. No one's sure why it isn't happening, though there are theories, which I'm happy to share in the sidebar afterwards because it involves words about the male anatomy that might embarrass some. And these days, I'm never sure what I can and can't say. And since I'd like this not to be my first and last tour, since I may be needed, well, never mind. But if you do enjoy the tour, please tell the management. Merci. <laughs> okay, full disclosure. Yes, this is my first tour. But we all have to bravely pivot when we come to a foreign land. Yes, we have to be nubile. Well, my brain just did a mashup of nimble and agile and popped up nubile, nubile. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind being that either. I don't think my younger husband would mind that either. Sorry, PMI. Moving on or back rather in time. So finally, Marie Antoinette's brother, Joseph, comes to Versailles from Vienna and gives Louis a little talking to, perhaps explains a few things. And it's not too long before his wife is in the royal family way. Huzzah. And on December 19th, 1778, any Capricorns? Marie-Thérèse Charlotte is born. She's given the title Madame Royale, even though as a newborn, she is more Mademoiselle than Madame. But that's the custom then. Oh, and now, did you know by law you can no longer refer to a woman as mademoiselle? Everyone's a madam, though not that kind. Since there's no title for an unmarried man, none for an unmarried woman either. That's progress. Well, baby stubs. In short order, Marie Antoinette and Louis have three more munchkins. Louis Joseph, Louis Charles, by the way, get comfy with being confused because in this story, we got a lot of Louis. Got a lot of Louis. That's good. I write songs too. Someone's got to do it. And last but not least, there's baby Sophie. Oh, poor thing. All that royal inbreeding leaves her with hydrocephalia, a swelling of the brain. So it's now 1788. Marie Therese is 10. She's a spitting image of her mother, bouncing strawberry blonde curls and huge blue eyes. 
Now, this may be the most privileged and protected family in France, but we all have our upsets, even at Versailles. Back then, people don't really talk about their feelings. So when a crisis confronts Marie-Thérèse, who was her therapist, and if we were doing this for real, I would bring on my doll and talk to my doll. But that's enough of this little bite of Marie-Thérèse for now. <laughs>